Christian Broadcast Ministries presents CBM Worship. We invite you to worship with us as we praise and worship our Lord together through music, prayer, and God's Word. We bring you CBM Worship from the Sanctuary of the Wayside Temple, 3809 Maple Avenue in Castalia, Ohio. We pray you'll be blessed and encouraged as we worship our Lord together. the Lord. Let's worship him together as we pray. Father, we thank you for gathering in this, in this place today. We're thankful, Lord, for the freedom we have to come to worship, to lift our praise, 
to exalt the name of Jesus. Lord, to proclaim the word, not only in this building, but beyond these walls. Lord, we're thankful. Lord, you have done great things. Lord, you have saved us by your marvelous grace. Lord, you turned our life around. Lord, you gave us eternal life. Lord, what a glorious hope possesses our hearts today. Father, truly, we're grateful and we're thankful. And we want to praise you today. You're our God, our Redeemer. You have done great things. And Lord, you're just getting started because the best is yet to come. Praise your name. Lord, bless this service today. I pray you'll minister to every heart. I pray, Lord, you'll lift our spirit. I pray, Lord, you'll be our teacher. I pray, Father, you'll call us to your good will and purpose. Keep us in your good will and help us, Lord, to be a light to our world. Help us to share the love of Christ with those around us. But Lord, help us to be salt in the earth today. And Lord, put your hand on us in a fresh way. And help us, Lord, to live with the anticipation of the return of our Savior. And Lord, write this glorious truth upon our hearts and let it sustain us and let it lift us. Lord, we are anticipating the arrival of our bridegroom. He's coming, coming for his bride. And Lord, we're watching and we're waiting and we are ready. Praise your name. Now, Lord, speak to many hearts today, some inside this building, some beyond these walls. Lord, that soul that needs Christ as Savior. Lord, I pray that you'll draw them today. Lord, we lean upon you. You're on the throne today. You hear our prayers. And Lord, those petitions we offer in the name of Jesus, according to your will, we will receive those petitions and we thank you for it. Now, Father, again, help us to exalt and magnify that name that's above every name, the name of your son, Jesus. It is in his name we ask and pray. Amen. And amen. If you're not ashamed of the name of Jesus, can I have a good amen? amen? That sounds wonderful. Amen. You can be seated. Smile at somebody. Shake a hand if you're inclined to do that. Amen. Good place to be today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I got to take just a moment or two here to welcome you again. And uh, you know my routine. If I had my way, I'd chit chat with all of you. You all always look so wonderful. I'm not exaggerating. And uh, Brad, it's good to see you this morning. God bless you, brother. Coming along day by day, recovering from surgery. And uh, hey, he's smiling. That's a good thing. Hey, man, this is a good thing. Praise the Lord. Um, good to see each one of you today. And I uh, just want to brag on you a little bit. You know, in northern Ohio, most of the time, January just is a tough month. Let's just face it. We, we don't get too excited about January. Uh, the best thing about January, January is it ends tomorrow. And uh, we can get us a fresh month going. Praise God. But, uh, you know, you guys, uh, you're hanging right in there. I know there's sickness around, and I know we're still working through a lot of, a lot of stuff, to say it that way. But uh, we're so glad you're in the house of the Lord today as we exalt the Lord Jesus. We've come to worship Him, already enjoying ourselves. Am I saying it right? Already enjoying ourselves, worshiping our Lord. You know, He's the one who told us to assemble together. There's no man that invented the idea of a local church. Uh, it comes straight out of your Bible. And the Holy Spirit says to you and I as believers, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Now, that can look a bit different with different kinds of church schedules and that kind of thing. And uh, there's certainly not a right or wrong way to go about it. We just need to make sure we are going about it. And we need to be assembling together and even more so as we're able but uh, I got to brag on you a bit. In spite of January, sickness, and all the rest, you're a good-looking crew today. Um, I apologize. We had to change our plans. We had the fellowship dinner planned for today. And uh, this past week, we've had several on our staff that have been sick. And, um, you know, with some of the uh, flu bug that goes around and, and uh, the realities that we're dealing with, 
Uh, you can't just uh, kind of get well and go about your business. They still want you to, uh, you know, do X, Y, and Z before you get back uh, to normal, I guess. But we've been hindered a little bit. So, I, I, you know, if you were anticipating some good food after service, I'm really disappointing you. I tried to get the word out a little bit. <laughs> and hopefully most of you heard uh, via email or whatever uh, Wednesday night. But uh, we, we will reschedule that little dinner. And uh, the Lord willing, uh, in February, one of those Sundays, we'll get together and after church to have the good fellowship. So bear with us. And um, if uh, that really messed up your dinner plans, as in you don't have any now, <laughs> well, uh, the Lord, uh, he'll, he'll help you figure it out. I just, I'm confident. I'm really confident it'll happen. Another big thank you is in order here. I got to say thank you for your prayers. Uh, your calls of support, the encouragement in different ways that you've offered for the radio campaign, days of praise, the main on-air portion concluded Friday, but our responses are still coming in. Dave was just telling me before church had several more yesterday. Our renewal campaign continues through the month of February, and our dear friends, they'll be stepping up to the plate. But... The on-air activity has already moved over 71,000 raised, and that is awesome. And uh, the radio partner family there on FM 97, WJKW, we've got several friends that help us in Southeast Ohio as well. They're doing a great job, and we're just uh, positioned for another very successful campaign during 20. 22. So I'll, I'll take a moment. Uh, any that might uh, be participating as radio partners that might be watching or hear this otherwise along the way, we want you to know how much we appreciate your vision for Christian Radio. FM 97, signed on in 1975, January of 1975. And it's been the foundation of all this broadcast work. It was the starting point back in the day. And God has been faithful. He's blessed in a wonderful way. And we're really encouraged. Thank you for your prayers and uh, continue to pray over the campaign. As I mentioned, it will continue through the mail uh, this coming month of February. Out in the lobby, there's some handouts. Um, some of you might want a copy of the handout, Taking Care of Your Body. Uh, a few weeks back for three Wednesdays, we had some lessons on taking care of our body. And just reflected upon the reality that the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and then talked about a few practical things uh, in regard to uh, taking care of our body. I think I spent most of those discussions just telling those that were present that, hey, this is what I've been told for 40 years and I'm tired of everybody telling me I need to do this, like drink plenty of water. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Okay, okay. But anyway, there's helpful practical information in that handout out there. And also there are the recommended vitamins that you need to be taking in the age of COVID. And that's information I hope gets spread wide and far and everybody's getting a handle on it. Um, more, more on that another time, but uh, please help yourself. There's additional copies out there. Also, last Sunday, I barely scratched the surface, but... Uh, got to get your mind on the subject occasionally, the importance of Christian education. And uh, along that vein, I printed some extra copies of this little publication, How to Win Your Children to Christ. And I've got those out on the table, uh, a dozen more copies. If we run out, I can put some more out there. Now, some of you have this. It's available on my website. You need to revisit this. And I'm not going to take off preaching part two of last week's sermon, but I'm going to tell you something, parents. You got one brief window to win your children to Christ. And it's about a 13-year window from about age 5 to age 18. Your children are the battlefield. Your children are the prize. It's always been that way. And if you don't gear up to fight the battle, if you're haphazard, neglectful, and you hit a lick here and there, you're not going to win your children to the Lord Jesus. But I'm telling you, if you'll get a hold of this, and there's, um, again, some practical things here. Let me see how many points were. There's 13, 13 points that will help you as parents to get focused on winning your children to Christ. You need to do everything that's in that handout. I'm not apologizing for one point that's in that handout. And I will not apologize for fighting for our kids. We're not fighting hard enough. 
And uh, again, maybe I'll preach on the subject again soon, but we have got to step it up. You're either going to fight the battle and do what the Lord God tells you in his word, and you're going to be diligent about it, or you're not going to win your kids. You'll know they're not saved when at 18 and 20 and 25, they're just another statistic. I'm getting a little weary about hearing all the statistics about the millennials and all those walking away from the faith. They're not walking away from the faith. They never had any faith to begin with. Uh, this is the issue. We're not actually winning our kids to Christ. And uh, we've got them baptized in the world. They uh, hardly know enough Bible to quote John 3, 16 at age 18, but somehow we want to think we want them to Christ. How about we get serious about this thing? And uh, by the grace of God, we can win them and we can train them. And there will be a generation to take the baton when you and I slip off to heaven. All right, there you go. Have at it. No excuses. Get your mind refreshed and uh, stay with it. I'll do anything in my power to help you as a pastor to win your kids to Christ. But uh, if you're not going to put forth any effort and you're not going to obey what the Holy Spirit says to do, then uh, faith cannot come. Amen. Faith doesn't come by accident. It comes on purpose. And believe me, this book right here has the power to produce faith, deep-seated convictions in the heart of any young person. But of course, what Satan has done very successfully is he has separated your children from the Bible. And um, he's doing that in our own Christian homes. You've got the Bible on the coffee table, but you haven't opened it in six months. Satan has successfully separated you from the scriptures, and they're sitting right there. All right. I'm almost preaching part two of last week's sermon, ain't I? <laughs> Okay, fight the battle. We're with you. We'll help you. Uh, no question about it. All right. Got a new series starting on Wednesday. We just started it this past Wednesday. Great chapters of the Bible. We looked at Genesis 22 this past Wednesday. Now, uh, we'll keep an eye on the weather. It's that time of year. We'll just watch the weather. It might be some good snow coming. You guys that like snow, maybe middle of the week, you might get your wish. Who knows? We'll wait and see what happens. But if the good Lord wills, we'll be back at it this Wednesday. If not this Wednesday, it'll be the following week. Exodus chapter 12 will be our next uh, focus. Uh, another great chapter in the Word of God. This one's focused on the Passover. So just to give you a heads up, you can read ahead and be with us uh, on that study as, as you're able. All right, let's see what else I need to mention real quick. Oh, we offered this resource uh, during our fall campaign of time to sow, Before the Wrath. How many of you happen to, you have this in your home, some of you? Wave at me, yeah, okay. Have you watched it? You watched it, good. I watched it again. <laughs> Bless you, Jack. Um, I watched it again yesterday, and this is loaded with such wonderful information. And uh, just, you know, the clarity to help us understand some of our Lord's statements. He took it right out of the Galilean culture and they would have known exactly what he was talking about. Well, believe me, the excitement about him coming for his bride, I'm telling you, maybe today, I say, even so, come Lord Jesus. Don't even look at me funny. I ain't worried about no Super Bowl. Super Bowl? If the Lord Jesus splits the skies today, hallelujah, even so, come Lord Jesus to be with our Lord, to be home, to be in that place that he's prepared for us. Holy mackerel, I'm ready to preach. Oh, yeah. You guys need to visit that little video. If you don't have a copy of it, contact our ministry. We'll figure it out, and uh, you'll enjoy it. It'll add depth to your understanding of our Lord's return for his bride. Yes, thank you, Jesus. All right, here we go. We worship the Lord in our tithe and offerings. We do it every week. We lay back as the Lord's blessed us and prospered us. You can do that on the way out of service today. Always count it a joy to give to the Lord, church. And uh, we're laying up our treasure in heaven, experiencing God's faithfulness now. I mean, this is just a win-win. Brother Josh, it's win-win. God's faithful now, and he's going to reward us when we get home. Amen. Tell me God's not a good God. He's a good God. And I'll tell you, he'll bless his people that serve him. And Jesus said, if any man serve me, serve me, him will my father honor. Ooh, you think about that. All right. We're also praying for America. Amen and amen. Keep interceding for the country.
sometimes on this journey I get lost in my mistakes What looks to me like weakness Is the canvas for your strength But my story isn't over My story's just begun And failure won't define me Cause that's what my father does No failure won't define me Cause that's what my father does shame at the door cause it ain't welcome anymore oh you're in the father's house and arrival's not the end game the journey's where you are you never wanted one in my heart And the story isn't over If the story isn't good Failure's never final When the Father's in the room Failure's never final When the Father's in the room on the move when the father's in the room prison doors fling wide the dead come to life love is on the move when the father's in the room miracles take place the cynical find faith love is breaking through when the father's in the room jericho walls are quaking Strongholds now are shaking. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Oh, lay your burdens down. Oh, here in the Father's house, check your shame at the door. Well, praise the Lord. Makes you want to shout. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't it good to be in the Father's house? Thank you, Jesus. We're spiritually there, and one day we're going to physically be there. Amen. Open your Bible to the book of St. Mark, chapter 13. We will begin our reading at verse 28. Mark, chapter 13. And uh, we'll read verses 28 down through the balance of the chapter here in a moment. I believe the Lord Jesus Christ is coming again. I believe in his imminent return for his bride, the church. And I believe in his visible, physical return to earth as described in Matthew chapter 24 and Revelation chapter 19. Prior to our Lord's return, the Bible predicts perilous times will come. As the end approaches, we can expect the world to become more violent, 
and more dangerous. The Bible also declares that in the last days there shall come scoffers or mockers walking after their own lusts. Clearly, this indicates a growing disdain for the Lord's prohibition against immorality, perversion, and moral confusion. Furthermore, the Bible says these mockers will not accept the truth of Christ's return. Amen. Mockingly, they say, where is the promise of his coming? It's interesting to note that a lost world does know authentic Christians believe Jesus is coming again. And let me just say it as loud and as clear as I can. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming again. Sadly, instead of an attitude of repentance, most continue in sin and self-deception. They mockingly so much as say, you Christians have been preaching the return of Christ for 2,000 years, but he hasn't come yet and he will never come again. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit, but ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And I say, amen and amen. Yeah. The multitudes that are in unbelief go about their daily lives as though Christ will never return. But Jesus says, and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also, Jesus said, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Amen. Oh my. Let's read our text and then we'll pray. Mark chapter 13. Verse 28, the Lord Jesus is speaking. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When her branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So ye in like manner, when ye shall see these things come to pass, know that it is nigh or near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you that this generation shall not pass to all these things be done. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for you know not when the master of the house cometh, at even or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping and what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for gathering us around this word today. Now, Lord, quicken the truth of your word to our hearts today. And Lord, fill us with a fresh anticipation of your coming for the church. And Lord, help us to take to heart your instruction. Lord, this is your word. You say to us, take heed. Watch and pray. Then, Lord, we need to take heed, and we need to watch, and we need to pray. Father, speak to that soul today that's unprepared for the return of the Savior. Speak to that man, that woman, that boy, that girl 
who needs a settled faith in the Savior. Lord, I know you're faithful, and I know you honor your word, and I know your spirit will bear witness. Draw men and women and boys and girls to the Savior today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, in verse 28, Jesus gives a simple illustration to point out the ability to discern the reality of his second coming just before it occurs. Now, I want you to listen very closely for a couple minutes because when I come to this subject, I think it's important that you discern the difference between Christ's coming for his church and Christ's visible second return with his church to rule and reign on the planet. So stay with me and listen very carefully. In verse 28, Jesus gives a simple illustration to point out the ability to discern the reality of his second coming just before it occurs. He says, just as the tender branches of a fig tree, when it is putting forth leaves, indicate summer is near, likewise those alive who see the details of the tribulation period unfold will know his second coming is at the doors. In fact, the generation who sees those things will not pass until all these things be done. Now stay with me. Then in verse 32, Jesus does an about face and says, but of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the son, but the father. Clearly, Jesus is not talking about his glorious appearing at the end of the great tribulation, since everyone who can count will know exactly when he shall appear. You say, what are you talking about, Brother Russ? All right, here's something I'll just give to you quickly, and then we'll move on. There are 70 weeks of years determined upon Israel as a nation. 69 of those weeks of years, per Daniel's famous prophecy, have already found literal fulfillment in history. There is one week of years left. There's a seven-year period of world history that remains for, in particular, the children of Israel. It is determined upon them. That period of time, that seven-year period of time, is defined right down to the very day. The scripture divides that seven years into two equal parts of three and a half years each, 1,260 days each. There's 2,520 days in that period of time. And Jesus Christ himself says in Matthew 24, immediately after the tribulation of those days, immediately when Daniel's 70th week has been fulfilled and it's all done, he's not waiting another week, he's not waiting another month, he's not waiting another year, he's not even waiting another day, brother. When that has counted down, Jesus Christ says, immediately will the sign of the Son of Man appear as he comes back in great power and great glory. So here's the point. If you're alive during that horrendous time on planet Earth, and if you have any, any ability at all to discern and know Scripture, you will know exactly the day of His glorious appearing. If you understand what I just said, say amen. amen. But Jesus in our text says, but of that day and that hour knoweth no man. But Lord, we know about your visible, physical return to planet Earth. We can tell once you're in that period of time, it's like the little fig tree that's putting forth its branches and has the little leaves on it. We see that happening. We say, boy, summer's almost here. Yeah, and if you're alive and you see all the details of the 70th week of Daniel's prophecy unfolding right before your eyes, event after event after event, you can say, hey, guess what? King Jesus is going to be here real soon. And this is about the day right here. So when he says, but of that day and of that hour, no man knoweth, what's he talking about? <laughs> He's talking about something that is special and unique to his church. In verse 32, he's talking about the time unknown when the father will tell his son to go get his bride. <laughs> Woo, that day is coming. Praise God. We know Jesus took that idea directly from the tradition contained in the Galilean marriage ceremony to illustrate the truth of imminency. 
as it relates to his coming for his bride, the church. As you may recall, once a couple in Galilee were betrothed to one another, then the groom went to his father's house to prepare a place for his bride. Are you getting familiar with this tradition? This is what Jesus was referencing. This is what he's making reference to in John 14 and other passages. All right, they went to the Father's house to prepare a place for the bride. During that time of waiting, the bride prepared herself for the wedding, which would take place when the groom suddenly arrived unannounced. However, the son in the Father's house did not initiate his return for his bride. Only the father knew when that day would be. This is fascinating. We got to get our arms around the culture of the day. Jesus performed 70% of his ministry in and around Galilee. All of his disciples were from Galilee. He uses the culture of the day to help communicate spiritual truth. And every one of those disciples would have recognized immediately. Nobody knows. Not even the son. Only the Father. <laughs> Amen. Woo, we're saying, dear Heavenly Father, go ahead and whisper the words today. Son, go get your bride. And if those words are spoken to the Son, he'll be here in a moment's time. And don't you forget this about the return of Christ for his church. The return of Jesus Christ is all about the first resurrection. Most of the church is already in heaven. We've got loved ones there. We've got friends there. We've got brothers and sisters in Christ there, absent from the body, unclothed for a season, just waiting for that glorious day when the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ will rise first and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's right. The return of Christ for his bride is all about resurrection. Hey, let me tell you something. Our Savior has purchased our Redemption and our salvation in its totality. We're saved now. We have eternal life now, but we're still waiting for the redemption of this body. Woo, and it's coming. My Savior's done purchased us a brand new body, and there's a day coming when we shall be like him. This old corruptible has got to put on incorruption. This old mortal has got to put on immortality. Thank God there's a change coming in Brother Ross. There's a change coming in you. Thank God the old man is never entering God's new heaven. Oh, no, we got us a brand new body coming. That's the big deal about the Lord's coming for his church. Because he's promised the redemption of our bodies. And of course, per our Lord's program, there will be a generation of believers Amen. who never taste physical death. Yes. Perhaps we're part of that crowd. But it's real. Because there's going to be a change take place in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. When Christ calls for his church. Amen. Coming back to take his bride to the Father's house. Woo! Even so, come Lord Jesus. The Father will initiate that. You know, the business of the Godhead doesn't belong to us. The Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, they got their own business and it ain't none of ours. And when he says, only the Father knows, me and you, we scratch your heads and we say, well, just how can that be? Won't you all be quiet? Leave the Lord alone. If he says only my father knows, then only the father knows. Amen. Doesn't diminish the nature of Christ one iota. The Lord can lay aside willingly certain knowledge if he chooses to. And in this case, he has absolutely chosen to lay it aside because only the father knows. And one day he's going to say, son, you go get your church. <laughs> Woo! Come on. Come on. Our Lord's disciples understood the statement of verse 32 much better than we do, I, I'm quite sure. Here's the point. Jesus is saying there are no signs 
and no way to know when the father will tell him to go get his bride. This is the reason we are taught to be ready at all times. Amen. See, if the, second, if the return of Christ for his church wasn't imminent, then we could say, ah, oh, we don't have to worry about it. Jesus won't be coming back in our lifetime. Oh, but that would be a mistake because he didn't give us that option. He said, you be ready. He said, take heed, watch and pray. I'm coming in an hour that you think not. Christ wants his church on their toes spiritually. He doesn't want you living sloppy lives. He doesn't want you living haphazard lives. He wants you to be living your life on purpose. He wants you to be living your life with, with your eyes fixed on him. He wants you living your Christian life, anticipating your home going. Let me tell you something. If you're expecting Jesus to come, that'll get down in the fabric of your life. And instead of living sloppy lives and, and instead of being uh, unconcerned about personal holiness, you'll get with the program. How many of you want to get caught with your hand in the cookie jar? So I don't think I'll behave that way. The Lord might come today. That's right. That's right. I want that to get down in my spirit. I want to hear it. I want to receive it. Jesus says to me, son, take heed. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. And so we don't know the day or the hour of the sudden return of Christ for his church. And it could be today. Take heed, watch and pray, for you know not when the time is. How do we watch? First, we watch by having oil in our lamps. Most of you are familiar with the parable of the ten virgins. Five were wise and five were foolish. The wise took oil in their lamps. The foolish had none. And while they slept and slumbered, suddenly the midnight cry went out. The bridegroom cometh. Oh, they had to scurry and gather themselves. And the ones that were wise trimmed their lamps and they were able to go out to meet the bridegroom. The others weren't ready. Oil in the Bible <clears throat> is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The five wise virgins picture the saved who are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Those who neglect to receive Christ as Savior are unprepared and will be left behind. Take heed, my friends. The road to hell is paved with neglect. It's time for you to wake up. It's time for you to be of serious mind, to be alert. It's time to watch and pray. It's time for you to have a season in your life where you bow the knee and you call upon the name of the Lord and you receive forgiveness of sin. You receive his salvation. You confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. And when that happens, you will be saved and you'll have oil down in your lamp. Oh, yes, you will. Wake up. You know, I get concerned about our country for a lot of reasons like you do. But the bigger reason to be concerned about America is she's not a good steward of the gospel. Our people have heard the gospel like no other nation in the history of this world. And what's our country doing with it? Insulting the spirit of God, trampling underfoot the precious blood of the Lord Jesus, flaunting their immorality their wickedness, their perversions, their moral confusion, pushing God out of our society. Dare we say that our country needs to return to the Lord. We'll have the wicked wanting to throw us in jail before the sun goes down. But let me tell you something. You won't have to worry, America. If you don't repent soon, the Lord God is going to deal with a hard hearted, stiff necked people. He will not allow the gospel to continually be preached to a nation that tramples it under their feet. Amen. We Christians, we love America and we want to see her spared. We want to see her blessed. But she can't continue down the road of open, Amen. hostile rebellion against the Lord God. Today, we set up the wicked and we push down the righteous. Yes. The Lord God's watching. Yes, Lord. 
He doesn't sleep and he doesn't slumber and he doesn't lose track of anything. He sent preachers like me. There's thousands of us. There's a church in America that's authentic. We might be the minority, but we're still preaching and we're still calling this nation to repentance. But you don't like us, do you? You don't want to listen to the preacher tell you that you need to repent and turn from your sin, that we need to put God back in our homes and in our churches and in our schools. We need to honor the living God. The Lord's not impressed with a visible church that offers lip service to him either. He's not impressed with us just showing up for church on Sunday morning for an hour. The Lord God wants obedience to his word. He expects us to walk with him and we ought to walk with him. How good he's been to us. We were lost and he saved us. We were undone and he found us. Thank God he's made us join heirs with Jesus Christ. And how do we treat the Lord? We just slough along and we offer him this, this horrible Lack of obedience in our lives. We need revival in our hearts as believers. There needs to be a new day of obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. You're not reading this book. If you were reading this book, you know, you'll have to do one of two things if you read this book. You'll either start obeying this book or you'll stop reading it. Because you're not going to hang out with this book and stay the same. And you know what? There's a lot of people, I'm afraid, in our churches that pretty much quit. They've stopped reading the book. All you want is God's blessing. You want God's comfort. You want just a little money in your checking account. And you want a pretty decent life. And you want to get along in this temporal world. Well, what for, sweetheart? You're only going to be here for a few short years. you got your whole focus here. Wake up, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to take heed. Watch and pray. Christ is coming. And you're worried about having a few more dollars in your bank account. Mm -hmm. We watch. Make sure you got the oil in your lamp. We watch by staying awake to the eternal. We watch by pursuing personal holiness. We watch by standing fast in the faith, faith, 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Can I just say this quickly? And I'm almost out of time. My faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is not for sale. Do you understand that? It's not open to negotiation. We're not going to sit down at a table and try to get along. Listen, I love you and I'd do anything in the world for you, but I'm here to tell you Jesus Christ is not a way. He is the way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the only way to the Father. And if you intend to walk into God's heaven, you're going to have to come through the door. Who is the Lord Jesus Christ? Ah, this watered down gospel today. The church, the professing church, practically ashamed to bear the name of Jesus. Shame on you. I'll say it again. My faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is not for sale. You say, well, we don't want nothing to do with you if you're going to confess Christ. You go your way, sweetheart, and I'm already going mine. I ain't about to get on the broad road which you're traveling. I don't like where that ends up. We watch by taking to ourselves the whole armor of God. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for our helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to ask our team to come, prepare, and I'll finish some thoughts here as they're making ready. We watch by warning others to get ready. You're, you're Christians. You're disciples of Jesus Christ. You're not watching for the Lord's return. I'll tell you one thing. If you and I aren't warning other people to get ready, then you and I aren't watching very good ourselves. We need to watch also with an eager anticipation of our Lord's return for his bride. This is our blessed hope. This hope grows in our spirit as the things of this world fade from view. Let me tell you something. The bride of Christ ought to have leaving 
on their mind. <laughs> Amen. That ain't, that ain't just something that Brother Rusty Goodman wrote in a song. That's Bible today. Listen, if you know Christ and you know the free pardon of sin in Christ and you know you have eternal life and you know he's prepared a place for you in his father's house, my soul, we ought to have some leaving on our mind. I'm looking forward to God's heaven. How about you? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, we are. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm concluding with these words from our Lord in the Revelation. This is the Savior, our risen Lord, speaking to the church. And he says unto the angel of the church in Sardis, write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works that thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead. I want to tell you something. If King Jesus looks at a church and says, you've got a name that you're alive, but you're dead, that ought to be deeply concerning. Because he's not talking about a regenerate people. He's talking about a people hanging out in the church that don't know him. They have the outward form none of the inner reality. Jesus says they're dead. He says, be watchful yeah. and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. Now listen to this. If therefore thou shalt not watch, if you take anything home from this sermon today, I hope the Holy Spirit writes this on your heart, your Savior is expecting you as a believer to be watching for his return. Amen. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, but hold it. First Thessalonians 5 says that we're not in darkness, that that day should overtake us as a thief. Well, how do we rightly divide this? It's not that hard. We got a whole batch of people in the visible church that aren't born again. We got a whole batch of people that call themselves Christians and there's no reality to their faith. My friends, a lot of people can have a so-called brand of Christianity without the Lord Jesus himself. Pray tell what are these people doing? Let me tell you something. If you're not watching for the Lord's return, I have reason to doubt your salvation. Amen. Chew on that while you're eating your chicken this afternoon. <laughs> And don't look at me funny. Jesus said, if you won't watch, I'll come on you as a thief. There's one thing I'm sure of. When King Jesus does come again, there's going to be a whole lot of people in the visible church that won't even know he's been here until they walk out their church doors or figure out that, hey, what happened here? Maybe they'll wake up then. They can start counting the days until the visible return of Christ as soon as Antichrist signs that seven-year peace treaty. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names. Hear that. Jesus looking at the condition of the visible church in Sardis. And there's much application for us. He looks at it and he says, you know what? There's a few names, <laughs> even in Sardis, yes. which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcomes the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and, will not, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcomes. Now, I'm out of time, been out of time. I've already lost part of our audience, but maybe they can watch some of it next Sunday night. Listen, if you think our Lord Jesus is satisfied with the condition of the visible church, you're not reading this book. Amen. The Lord's not happy with the church in America. He's not happy with a lot of the church around the world. Why? Because the church is so warmed up to the world today. I mean, does it grieve your heart to hear statistics and reports that half of our young people sitting in evangelical churches this morning across this country 
have their doubts as to whether or not Jesus Christ is the Son of God? They're sitting on a pew and they're listening to a preacher. I don't know what the preacher's preaching. You know what? I think we need to make sure we're preaching the gospel clear enough so that people can either get saved, get in or get out. Let me tell you something. God, the Lord Jesus isn't impressed with us having a crowd. Christ always thinned the crowd. He wants to know uh, that you're authentic. He wants some people that actually love him. He wants some people that will confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus, who are not ashamed to bear his name. We don't have any doubt about Jesus being the son of God. He is the son of God. He died for our sins. He was buried. And thank God on that third day, he rose from the dead with victory in his hand for all those who believe upon him. There's no doubt about that. You say, well, you preach that way, you'll run everybody off. We'll run everybody off that's not saved. And if you don't want to be saved, why are you here today? I trust you're seeking the Lord. I trust you've got enough about yourself to understand that you've got to get right with God. Preachers play spiritual tiddlywinks, but our great shepherd in heaven, he's not into tiddlywinks. He said, you either watch or I'll come on you as a thief. In other words, there's no reality to your faith if you're not anticipating my return. There's no reality to your faith if I don't mean any more to you than that, you don't even know who I am. Amen. You know, I got saved when I was a boy. And when I was a young teenager, I was reading my Bible. I heard Brother Shelby preach, heard other pe people preach. I heard this word preached. And I responded that word to that word. I've been looking forward to Jesus coming back all these years, over 50 years, living and learning more about it, but anticipating his return. I don't know how people claim to be Christians and they have zero excitement about Jesus coming back. Maybe it's time for an old fashioned dose of salvation to hit your heart and you actually come to know him. And then you'll be excited about the Lord Jesus bursting through the sky. Amen and amen. It has been a blessing for us to worship together this time. And we invite you to come worship with us. CBM is located 3809 Maple Avenue in Castalia, easily accessible from State Route 2. Take Route 2 to State Route 101 South and turn left onto Maple Avenue. We would love to have you visit. And don't forget, it's your prayers and gifts of love that bring this program into your home each week. Send your gifts of support, prayer requests, and comments to CBM, Box 247, Castalia, Ohio, 44824. CBM Worship is a production and presentation of Christian Broadcasting Ministries. CBM, proclaiming the word.